at Larson. Legends and crystal waters and mine. Co-host Lou Fant. Now, if you want to find out what we're up to today, don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. To talk about Access Theater, headquartered in Santa Barbara, we have with us today Mr. Rod Latham, the theater's artistic director, and Laurie Hennessy, one of the stars of their upcoming production. Welcome to Offhand. Thank you. All right. I'd like to begin by asking you, what is Access Theater? Could you describe it a little bit more? Give sure. us some of the background of it. Access Theater is an accessible theater company based in Santa Barbara, uh, which trains and employs uh, actors who happen to be hearing, hearing impaired, and deaf. Um, we've also used um, actors on occasion with physical disabilities. The main goal of Access Theater is to provide um, an opportunity for um, anyone to be involved in theater on a professional level now. Uh, that wants to be through audition and through uh, participation in our workshops. Well now, how long has this been going on? How long has it been in existence? We started in 1979, and uh, the first two or three years of our existence, we were primarily a recreational theater. Um, and in about 1980, late 83, 1984, uh, we began employing our actors and started touring and kind of made the transition between a recreational theater to a professional theater. Um, as we grew, um, there were more and more people outside of the Santa Barbara area that were interested in finding out more about accessible theater. And uh, as we incorporated sign language and deaf actors into our shows, um, the interest grew and grew. And now we tour throughout the Western United States and uh, have a fairly strong following. Who created uh, this whole concept? Was that you? Yes, I'm, I'm the founder as well as the director. <laughs> now, what made you decide that you wanted to do something like that? Do you have any members in your family who perhaps are disabled or, or do you know sign language before? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I, don't, I, I wish I had a great story for you, but I don't have anything um, earth-shattering to tell you other than that. Um, for years and years, I've worked um, with a, a wide variety of people in many different situations. And my interest in theater really is where it all comes from. I've enjoyed working in theater since I was in junior high school. And uh, the idea of making theater um, accessible, obtainable to, uh, to all people as opposed to just a hearing audience um, was very exciting to me. I saw a great need for that. Um, and in 1981, 1982, it just didn't exist very much. It didn't exist at all in the central coast of California. Um, and I met uh, a number of deaf individuals in Santa Barbara and interpreters, started studying sign language myself. And uh, it just slowly developed into what is now um, a professional theater. That, and all of our productions incorporate um, American Sign Language as well as voiced English. And all of our company members sign for themselves now. We used to interpret our shows with um, shadow interpreters. Now we, all of our, our company members sign for themselves. You know, I, we, we always hear over and over that uh, if you have people who are signing on the stage, it uh, it's, it's bothers the audience, it's distractive, but it seems to work just the opposite way for you. Uh, you really made people interested and they've come to see it with all this signing on the stage. What's your secret? Well, um, I don't know if I have a secret other than I have found over the last eight or nine years of, of doing this work that, um, as you mentioned, s some people do consider sign language as an impairment or it gets the fact that it gets in the way for a hearing audience member. Um, we still have people, a, a rare amount of people, but there's still a few people who will come up after a show and say, God, you know, that sign language got in the way. But I would say 95% of our audience members, obviously our deaf audiences and, and also our hearing audience members, really enjoy um, the way we have 
woven sign language into the fabric of our shows as opposed to having interpreters. Sometimes when you have interpreters, shadow interpreters, platform interpreters, um, it's an extra body on stage. And sure, it's easy to, for an audience member to you know, have one more person to watch. It's getting in the way. But we found that when everyone in our company signs for themselves, um, you don't have the extra body. You don't have an extra interpreter up there. And so our languages are woven together. And I think probably if there's a secret to be had, that's, that's probably it. Something that makes our productions fairly unique. I think perhaps the secret was that uh, the kind of plays you give too, that meant they must be awfully good. I know my audience would like to see some of the slides that you've brought with you. Sure. Could you give us an idea of what's happening? Let's see, the title of the play is Legend of the Crystal Waters, right. I think. Is that right? That's a fascinating title. <laughs> uh, what's the theme? What's it all about? Well. Legend of the Crystal Waters is a musical fantasy. It's, it's billed as a magical musical fantasy. And uh, we definitely go into just about every realm of fantasy on stage that we possibly can. Um, if we have the slides ready, maybe we can show you the slides now and I can give you an idea of the story as we go through the slides. Um, I can't give away all the secrets of the show, but I'll give you a little background on the characters and the story. Okay, fine. Okay. Let's look at the slides then. The, uh, the story takes place around a central character of Abra. And you are looking now at a picture of Abra. You can see her blue eyes there. That's the set of the show. And the set is kind of like a giant puppet. Um, it's a 30-foot long foam sculpted set that is a, a, lo a living character. And she represents basically the, the planet that the show takes place on. And uh, she consumes people and spits them back out and has a waterfall on her and eyes that open and close and she even signs for herself there's an outcropping of rocks that comes up during the show whenever Abra speaks uh, it, she actually signs for herself as do all the other characters in the show and this is Mordegrim on... Um, Ooh, I spell that wrong <laughs> Mordegrim, M-O-R-T-E-G-R-I-M Mordegrim, he's the bad guy uh, Mordegrim is stealing the water from the planet uh, in Legend of the Crystal Waters. And uh, this is his sidekick. Um, that he's, he's pretty abusive to his sidekick. His sidekick's name is Exeter. And uh, Mordegrim is stealing the water from the planet. And uh, as you see in this next slide, uh, the man in the middle is um, Derek. And Derek comes to this part of the land and is basically the hero of the story. He meets April and May, the two ladies next to him. And together, they join other characters, such as this man here, Gunther. Gunther is from the Crystal Caverns, and he brings magical crystals from the caverns with him, uh, which um, I don't want to give away the plot, but they have a very key, um, key figure in, in, the, in the story and how the waters of the land are ultimately restored and along with peace into the planet. This is Cora, who is a mermaid, and Cora has been literally kicked out of the ocean because the waters are drying up. And so Cora is kind of an obnoxious, uh, loudmouth mermaid, which um, is looking for water just like everyone else. And she joins the band of characters. Uh, Lori, who is with us today, plays Doria. And this is Doria and Derek. Doria is the personage of water. Um, she has the ability to appear and disappear through mist effect as you see around them in the picture and uh, she appears and actually falls in love with Derek and we explore the the trials and tribulations of mortal versus non-mortal love which is kind of a subplot in the show um, this is a moment in the show when Doria actually is vaporized and Exeter um, captures her and uh, you'll have to come to see the play to see if she escapes. <laughs> uh, wow. This is one of the final slides. This is uh, Doria at, one, at a part where uh, Abra actually rains or has a waterfall that falls off of the set. And then the last picture is Derek towards the end of the show. And you can see Doria's hand there coming out of the mist to beckon Derek to join her. And that's it.
<laughs> wow. <laughs> we'll be right back with more. So don't go away. As we continue to speak about Access Theater and their projects, we now have the theater sign language consultant, Peter Robertson, joining us. Welcome to you, Peter. <laughs> now, getting back to what we just saw a moment ago, um, the production we saw before the commercial, when will this take place and where? Uh, we will be at the Barnstall Gallery Theater in October, um, the 16th through the 24th. Uh, some of we have five of our performances are already sold out, but we do have seven performances open uh, with tickets still available uh, October 16th and 17th, and the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of October. And uh, at the end of the show, I think we'll have the Ticket Express number up for ticket information and for ticket purchases. And there's a voice and a TDD number to call. Okay, fine. Now you better get your paper and pencil ready for later. <laughs> and we better get our tickets too early, Lou. Now, Lori, I was watching you in there, how beautiful you look in those pictures. Uh, this is a, a extremely lavish production that I'm sure how did you enjoy it, uh, this production? Did you enjoy it? <laughs> oh, yes, I really did, being involved in this production. I've been involved in several of the productions, and they were all very, very good. But this one was really exceptional. They were a great advancement over what we'd done before. We showed the audience. We showed the audience that we could be successful in, in what we were doing, and we also get involved with the educational part. How water is uh, precious, and uh, so I think this this play that we saw, being involved in it, and then doing it again this fall, was um, well. I don't know how to say it, but it's uh, uh, well, just the most wow show I've been in. <laughs> Now, is your aim to be a full-time actress? <coughs> no, no, it's just a, a hobby with me. Um, this Being involved in this gave me an idea of what to do with my future um, as a role model for two deaf girls who came to see the play uh, on a field trip to the theater. And they had never seen a deaf adult in their life. And uh, this uh, opened their eyes to this, as it never happened to them before. And then I started working with them, visiting their school. And I, I th thought it was really fun and neat to work with deaf kids. And so this helped me to decide to major in uh, liberal studies at uh, CSUN and become a teacher in the future. Well, I'm sure you will make a, a very good role model. Now, Peter. I'm so happy to have you here. I understand you've been involved in some kind of projects with this group. Could you talk about uh, your involvement in this? Sure. Uh, <coughs> part of what I'm involved with with the theater is when I'm not able to uh, be a performer myself, uh, I help with uh, access uh, concerns and uh, it involves primarily uh, helping any hearing performer learn the signs for their lines as well as working with the whole cast to decide on what are going to be some of the unique signs that we might want to agree with. Recently, um, one of the biggest challenges was being involved in the production of a uh, videotape on um, earthquake uh, preparedness called The Silent Quake. And that was a real fascinating uh, project because it took us off of stage and put us into a different medium of, of video. What encouraged you to um, set up this project? Uh, was this an individual or an agency that wanted it? Or how did it come about? Um, basically, we're on Peter here. <laughs> uh, we were, Access Theater was approached by the Ventura County 
Emergency Services Office. Uh, they received a grant from the State of California Emergency Services uh, to produce, to specifically produce a videotape that was captioned, voiced, and signed so that it was uh, accessible to hearing impaired and deaf audiences or deaf individuals throughout the state uh, and to educate people on earthquake preparedness. And now that the tape is finished, it's actually going to be seen throughout the state and also on a national level because it's the only videotape of its kind. Um, so we're excited about it. Great. Now let us look at some of it right now. Great. I understand that the captions are are also there, so you don't have to watch Lou. Ah. Lou, you can rest. <laughs> You know, scientists are expecting a large earthquake to hit Southern California within the next 25 years. It could hit us today, or tomorrow, and it's supposed to measure over eight points on the Richter scale. Japan had an earthquake in 1923 that measured 8.2 on the scale, and it killed over 143,000 people. Most recently, the 1985 Mexico City earthquake killed over 10,000 people, leaving many thousands homeless. It's pretty frightening to realize the same thing could happen here, leaving many people homeless and without jobs for years. Welcome to the basement. What do you think? <laughs> Sorry about that. Look at the foundation. You know, back in the 1940s, many homes were built differently than today. During a quake, your home could literally fall off its cement foundation, causing severe structural damage. You can solve that problem by installing bolts like these over here. They will help the house stay secured to the foundation. There is another way to secure the house to its foundation and prevent it from shifting. See these wood 4x4 four four beams? They support the floor structure in your home. During an earthquake, they could shift off the foundation and the floor collapse. The best way to keep the 4x4 four four beams in place is to do what I've done here. Wow, that's fascinating. Uh, I like adding the humor into it, too. I think that's very good. It's so clear. Now, how long did it take you to do this, and how many people were involved in it? Go ahead. We began writing in August and uh, started shooting during January and February, uh, editing, adding in captions. I think we were finished in late March. That's pretty good. It's, a, it's about um, a 40-minute videotape, and what we saw here today was just tiny clips of it, but it's very complete. Um, it's being used for hearing audiences as well as deaf audiences because it's the, they tell us that it's the most complete and thorough uh, earthquake preparedness tape that's ever been made. So um, it's, uh, hopefully, maybe we'll get to see it on Silent Network in the future in entirety. <laughs> that's another thing we could have here, yes. It's very important information, too. <clears throat> I wish we had more of it and uh, we will do you have plan other projects like this for the future um, there there has been interest because of the success of this tape uh, the state's very pleased with it and uh, they do have some ideas on some future tapes um, that hopefully we'll hear about soon nothing right away that we know of but uh, hopefully soon 
Uh, how do people then get it? I suppose if they want to see it, how do they contact you, or how do they get this? What's the process? They can either contact us at Access Theater, or they can call the Ventura County Emergency Services Office, and uh, they have tapes available uh, for free uh, for any organizations, or actually, for that matter, individuals that are interested in viewing the tape. Wow, that is fascinating. Now, if you want to get uh, more ticket information for the legend of the crystal waters called Ticket Express which is 213-465-057 uh, that's TDD and 213-465-0070 that's voice and uh, this will be at the Barnsdall Gallery Theater in October and we'll be right back in just a moment We're very happy to have brought you information about Access Theater, its talented staff, and their projects to you today. Thank you to Rod Latham, Laurie Hennessy, and Peter Robertson. And thank you, too, for being with us. Drop us a line to offhand, Post Office Box 1902, Beverly Hills, California, 90213. And come back next week. We'll be here waiting for you. Mm -hmm.